Good day. We are celebrating Liberty Day, D. Hampton Jackson. My name is Olasti Davis from the University of the Virgin Islands, a professor. Over the years, we have heard many wonderful things about D. Hampton Jackson. He was born in September 28, 1884. 26 years after emancipation, 1848 and six years after 1878 Fireburn. So Jackson, through our history from his parents or grandparents and others in the community, learn about the history of these islands. And so Jackson have a love for these islands, especially for farmers. Many times when we celebrate his birthday, we never talk about the farmers and their contribution that they make to these islands. So let me go back a little back in history. In 1848 and 1849, they established a contract. And the contract was basically written by the planters and the Danish government. And the planters, or I could say, the laborers didn't have to stay in a contract. 30 years after, you have the fire burn because of the poor situation in the Danish West Indies throughout the estates. Jackson came on scene and his time, situation here in Ireland was still hard. How people live on the plantations as going back to the 1848, 1878, and condition was terrible, especially for the working people. Sinclair at the the economy was sugar cane. And so Jackson went to Denmark and he gave permission to publish his paper, The Herald, that happened on the 1st of November, 1915, and also he was one of the members that established the Labour Union. Because of Jackson's love for the people and for farmers, the Union purchased a state grow place and purchased hard labor. This is estate hard labor where we are about 100 plus acres of land, for the land from Flat Valley up to the mountains. I have some pictures to show you to get a more understanding. In this picture, there is the line road and you can see the plow in the field with the axe and the jam down man standing up watching them. You can see the, you can see the palm trees, a royal palm tree, or we call cabbage palm along the road. This June Jackson time. This other picture is Kasi Buck. You can see the coconut trees on both sides of the field and the sugar cane and behind is Bethlehem and further to the back is Blue Mountain. This is how it was during Jackson time. In this picture, you could see how they're carrying the cane to the factory. This was during Jackson time. So people who work on St. Christ at that particular time, the major economy was sugar cane. In this picture, again, you can see the ladies are planting the cane. Lady play a major part in the sugar industry here in Ireland and throughout the Caribbean regions. So this is going to give a picture of how things was during those times. When Denmark sold the island in 1917, there was no land distribution 
in the Danish West Indies. So many people who live here didn't have land. In the 1930s, Jackson agreed to support the homestead. During that time, 90% of St. Croix's country were controlled by 25 cooperation or plantation owner. 90% of the land in the countryside was supported by or owned by a plantation owner. So Jackson, Deschabas, Paul Joseph support to have the homestead here in the Danish West, here in the Virgin Islands. Basically, it's to give people opportunity to own the own land. But the question is, did the homestead work for the people of the Virgin Islands? But before I go into that, I will mention some of the areas that people got land. Estate Rattan, Estate St. John, Estate Lagrange, Princess, North, Estate Northside, Estate Calhoun, Monk Pleasant, Estate Wim. These are some of the areas today you will find local people live going back from the 1930s and the 1940s. Why interesting is the trying to diversify the agriculture industry at that particular time. So what I'm going to read to you is the homestead did it work here in the islands and I'm reading what then was the final impact of the homestead program on St. Croix comprised of agriculture census 1930 1950 indicate that provided some important changes mostly noticeable. The number of farm owners doubled from 91 to 363. The number of non-white farmers owners increased from 56 or 62 percent of all farm owned to 318 or 87 percent of all farm owned. The number of farmland owned by non-white nearly doubled from 5,397 acres or 11% of all farmland to 10,133 acres or 25% farmland. Now you remember I told you earlier that 90% of the land were controlled by cooperation or plantation. In the 1950, 5% of the population own 80% of the land. So nothing has really changed since in the 1930 to the 1950s. 5% own 80% of the land at St. Christ. So that's why it's important for local to have land. And that's one of the initiatives that Jackson had and that's one region he purchased, estate her labor and grove. Where we are today, it's estate her labor. This is part of D. Hampton Jackson and those members of the labor union. As you look around, you can see um, the forest, a mango tree, gameps, and you go right up to the mountain areas. If you hike inside in there, you will see old ruins and sugar factories that our ancestors have labor. The area also called Tatola, because back in the 1700s, Tatolian migrated here during the Danish West Indies, and also folks from Anguilla that migrated in the 1700s to the Danish West Indies and to Tatola. I know we talk about Liberty Day and the press, but when this across, we talk about farmers being to sustain ourselves. And I think by talking about farmers and what the Hamilton Jackson did have done for these Virgin Islands, 
to own your own land and to grow your own food, what we call today food security. See, this is the example of his vision for more than a hundred years. And here he is today. And we can see the land that he works so hard to labor.